welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana <coughs> vishvesham satchidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat charikarti बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम यो खिलन जगत चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव स्टडीड what is samartha we said earlier that samartha has got two meanings one capable of and the second one having the same meaning samaha arthaha and in the previous lecture we saw where the capability of expressing the interconnected meanings of words lies in which situations we noted down three such situations in the previous lecture before that we also stated as to where there is no interrelation and therefore there is no capability of expressing the interconnected meaning we also earlier noted that there are interconnected words but they cannot be compounded primarily because both of them are not subantas so the pratyayas suffixes denoting different karakas connect the pratipadika with the verbal root with the suffix ting and then there is interconnectedness however these two are not eligible for compounding in sanskrit as a general rule because both of them do not end in ting both of them do not end in sup there is one word amongst them which ends in ting and therefore it cannot be compounded with the other word this we have studied now let us revisit it the first meaning of samartha is capable of capable of expressing the interconnected meanings what it means is that a word unit is capable of expressing the interconnected meanings so typically a pratipadika is not considered to be samartha as it cannot express the interconnected meanings on its own without the pratyaya getting added to it in one of the earlier lectures where we discussed about the meanings where we stated that there is prakrityartha there is pratyayartha and then there is samsargartha this is what we highlighted and we stated that the interconnected meanings are the ones which primarily depend on the pratyayartha so a pratipadika is not samartha as it cannot express the interconnected meanings on its own without the pratyaya getting added to it so a pratipadika has to be a pada that is it has to be a subantha only then it can express interconnected meanings similarly a tinganta also is capable 
of expressing the interconnected meanings. Now let us focus on the second meaning of samartha, having the same meaning, samaha arthaha. What this means is that interlinked, interconnected subantas are eligible to be compounded. Then they undergo the process of compounding stated step by step in Paninian grammar involving several types of operations stated in Paninian grammar by different rules and thus deriving the compound step by step with the help of rules laid down once again in the Paninian grammar and will generate output in the form of a nominal root which is a pratipadika which will mean the same as interlinked subantas where we started the process. So the interlinked subantas which are eligible to be compounded and the output generated in the form of a nominal root will mean the same, will have the same meaning. This is what is the second explanation of the word samartha, samaha arthaha. The compounded output meaning will be one unit, but it will be same as that of the interlinked subantas. This is the second important explanation of the word samartha which is applied in the theory of compounding. In this relation, it is important for us to study the concept of samarthya or samarthata where the Paninian grammatical tradition discusses two types of samarthya, vyapeksha and ikarthi bhava. In this lecture, we shall discuss these two types of samarthyas, quoting the relevant source, namely the Vyakarana Mahabhashya. We are quoting from a particular Arnhika called Samarthanhika, which is entirely devoted to the explanation of the Sutra Samartha Padavidhihi Ashtadhyayi 2.1.1. There is a very good English translation along with different types of notes and other explanations of this Samarthanika written by S. D. Joshi, which was published by the Erstwhile University of Pune. So now, Vyapeksha and Ekarthi Bhava, these are the two types of Samarthyas involved in the process of compounding. Patanjali, in his Mahabhashya, explains the word samartha in four ways. Sangatartha samartha, samsrishtartha samartha, samprekshitartha samartha, and sambadhartha samartha. Sangatartha samartha is first explanation which means when two meanings go together. That is one explanation of samartha where the preverb sam is interlinked with an action of going. The second explanation of samartha is samsrishtartha 
which means merged together. Here the word sum is interlinked with the verbal root sraja and the meaning is interlinked or merged. Samprekshitartha is the third explanation of the word samartha as proposed by Patanjali in his Mahabhashya. This means the meanings which are seen together. So sum is related to the action of seeing denoted by the verbal root iksha with the preverb pra in the word samprekshita. And finally, sambadhartha is the fourth explanation of the word samartha. This means meanings which are tied together. Samvadha, tied together. Here, the preverb sum is related to the action of tying denoted by the verbal root bandha and this is what is sambadhartha. These are the four explanations of the word samartha and we shall study them now with the help of the original primary source namely the Vyakarana Mahabhashya of Patanjali more specifically the Samarthanika. And these are the quotations and explanations. Now Patanjali says Tad yada tavat ekarthi bhavaha samarthyam tada evam vigraha karishyate sangatarthaha samsrashtarthaha samarthaha iti. So earlier we saw that the samarthya is stated to be of two types ekarthi bhava and vyapeksha. And then we saw that Patanjali offers four explanations of the word samartha. Here in this particular passage, Patanjali is showing which two explanations apply to ekarthi bhava. Patanjali is also giving examples which will make the meaning of the word ekarthi bhava clearer. What Patanjali says here is tad yada tavat ekarthi bhavaha samarthyam tada evam vigraha karishyate sangatarthaha samsrishtarthaha samarthaha iti. So when ekarthi bhava is the samarthya is what is the meaning of the word samartha, then the vigraha of the word samartha would be done in two ways out of the four, namely sangatartha and samsrishtartha. Meanings which are going together and meanings which are merged together. That is what is samartha. Tadiyatha Sangatam Gratam Sangatam Tailam Iti Uchate Eki Bhutam Iti Gamyate Sangatam Gratam The ghee which is mixed, the ghee which is merged, the ghee which goes together, and similarly the oil which also is merged. Eki Bhutam has become one with that particular element in which ghee and oil is poured. So they become one in that particular element. This is what is Ekarthi Bhava. What this gives us is that the meaning of Ekarthi Bhava is merging together two meanings becoming one. They go together, they are merged together. Now let us go to the second bullet on the slide in which Patanjali explains 
Vyapeksha Lakshana Samarthya. He says, Yada Vyapeksha Samarthyam Tada Evam Vigraha Krishyate Samprekshitarthaha Samarthaha and Sambadhartaha Samarthaha Iti. When Samarthya it will be intended to be Vyapeksha, then the word Samartha will be dissolved in the following two manners out of the four stated earlier, Samprekshitartha and Sambadhartha. The meanings which are seen together and the meanings which are tied together. So this is very important. There are some meanings which are tied with each other. There are some meanings which are seen together. This does not mean that those meanings are going together as one unit and that they are getting merged into one unit. They are tied with each other. They are seen together, which means that they are interrelated and they are also seen together. This interrelatedness is the meaning of Samartha when we use the word Vyapeksha. And when we use the word Ekarthi Bhava, two meanings and two words getting merged together is what is the meaning intended in this particular passage. As far as Ekarthi Bhava is concerned, Patanjali uses the sentence Eki bhutam iti gamyate. But that is not the case as far as Vyapeksha Samarthya is concerned. So we see that the two meanings of, sam, of Samartha, namely Ekarthi Bhava and Vyapeksha, they get proper explanation as far as Patanjali is concerned also with some examples. Now let us study Ekarthi Bhavaha in some detail. And once again, we are quoting the Patanjali Mahabhashya, namely the Samarthanhika. So, first the question is asked, Kim Samartham Nama? What is Samartha? And the answer provided is, Prithagarthanam Ekarthi Bhavaha Samarthavachanam. Prithagarthanam Ekarthi Bhavaha Samartha Vachanam. This is further explained in the next sentence Prithagarthanam Padanam Ekarthi Bhavaha Samartha Miti Uchyate. So, different meanings, when they become one, that is what is called Samartha. So the padas, the words which have different meanings, when their meanings become one, then that is called samartha. Patanjali further explains this vakye prathagarthani rajnaha purushaha iti. In the sentence, the padas have different meanings, rajnaha and purushaha. They are independent of each other. They have different features, formal as well as semantic and however they are interlinked but they are prithak. This is the state of Vakya. Now in Samasa, Samase Punar Ekarthani, in Samasa the two words in the sentence become one meaning denoting word. So, Ekarthani and the word is Raja Purusha. So, Rajnaha and Purushaha, they get merged Eki Bhutam in the Samasa. And that is what is Ekarthi Bhava Samarthya, which is the base of Samasa. So, Raja Purusha is the example in which two words are shown to be merged in whose meaning 
is also merged together. This is what is Ekarthi Bhava. What is the distinction between Ekarthi Bhava and Vyapeksha? Well, Patanjali has number of factors to show in this particular context. He asks the questions and begins the discussion, Kastarhi Ekarthi Bhava Kruto Visheshaha. What difference is made by the Ekarthi Bhava? And the answer is, Subalopo Vyavadhanam Yatheshtam Anyatarena Abhisambandhaha and Swaraha. Four, Subalopo Vyavadhanam Yatheshtam Anyatarena Abhisambandhaha and Swaraha. Subalopo is the non deletion of the sub pratyaya. Vyavadhana is the interrelation. Yatheshtam Anyatarena Abhisambandhaha is the order of the words and also the relation of other words. Swaraha is the accent. Now let us see how Patanjali explains each one of them in detail. Supaha Alopu Bhavati Vakye. This is the explanation of Subalopo. Patanjali says Supaha Alopu Bhavati Vakye. Rajnya Purusha Iti. Samase Punarna Bhavati. Raja Purusha Iti. In the sentence Sup in Rajnyaha and Purushaha retains itself. Whereas in the Samasa, this Sup is deleted. In the sentence, there is existence of Sup which is not there as far as the Samasa is concerned. Even though Patanjali gives the examples of Shashti Tatpurusha Samasa, these features are applicable across all the samasas, namely Avyayi Bhava, Bahuvrihi and Dvandva, which is the main concern of our course. However, these fundamentals need to be revisited even while studying these three samasas. And that is the reason why we have revisited these primary sources in order to understand the process of compounding that is stated in the Paninian grammar. The distinction between Ekarthi Bhava and Pepeksha is being discussed over here where Subalopa is the first distinction stated by Patanjali. Let us now look at the second distinction which is Vyavadhana, intervention. So Patanjali says, Vyavadhanam cha bhavati vakye. In the sentence, two words which are interlinked, they may have an intervention of another word. So Radnya Purushaha are the two interlinked words and they may have a word Ruddhasya coming in between them. Radnyaha Ruddhasya Purushaha. But this is not allowed in Samasa. Samase na bhavati. Raja Purusha. You cannot have Raja Ruddhasya Purusha. No, that is not possible. Raja Purusha is a merged entity with a different identity now as one unit. So there is no scope of any intervention. This is an important distinction stated by Patanjali. Now, let us look at the third distinction, which is Yatheshtam Anyatarena Abhisambandho Bhavati Vakye. In the sentence, the sequence of the or the order of words may change. So you may have Radnyaha Purushaha 
or you may also change the order and you may say purusho radhya and both these sets of words will denote the same meaning but you cannot do this as far as samasa is concerned samase na bhavati raja purusha iti you cannot have purusha raja in the same meaning of rajnya purusha so you cannot have the yatheshta anyatarena abhisambandha in the samasa therefore the order is fixed in the samasa this is the third distinction between ekarthi bhava and vyapeksha as explained by patanjali now let us look at the next fourth distinction stated by patanjali namely swara or accent dvau swarau bhavato vakye in the sentence there are two accents each pada has got one accent radnyah has got one accent and purushah also has has got one accent but when both these pads get merged together to form one different entity as one unit then we have only one accent on this one entity so patanjali says samase punar ek eva swarah in samasa there is only one swar on rajapurusha this is a very important distinction between the ekarthi bhav and vipeksha samarthya vipeksha is the interrelation interlinkage of the words and ekarthi bhav is when the words get merged together to form a different unit as one unit now there are more distinctions stated by patanjali he says ime tarhi ekarthi bhava krita visheshah sankhya visheshah vyakta vidhanam luk upasarjana visheshanam cha yoga iti these are the distinctions sankhya vishesh specific particular number is understood in the sentence and not in the samasa vyakta vidhana explicit expression which is a feature of sentence and this may be missing in the compound look is deletion upasarjana visheshanam the qualification of the qualified so qualification of the qualification is possible as far as the sentence is concerned but not the samasa and cha yoga the association of the word cha which is possible in the sentence but not in the samasa these are some more distinctions further explained by patanjali in his samarthanik let us look at them one by one sankhya visheshah so patanjali says sankhya visesho bhavati vakye you can say radnya purushah the servant of one king or you can say radnyoho purushah the servant of two kings or you can say radnyam purushah the man of three kings the servant of three kings so in the sentence you can express the number distinctly by using different case endings but this you cannot do in the samasa if you say raja purusha you do not know whether this is the king's man whether this man is the servant of one king or two kings or three kings this is not clear which is clear as far as the sentence is concerned the next distinction is vyakta vidhanam so patanjali says vyakta vidhanam bhavati vakye 
in the sentence there is explicit expression the example is given brahmanasya kambalas tishthati iti the rug of a brahmin stays samase punar avyaktam brahmana kambalas tishthati what is the relation between the brahmana and kambala this is not explicitly expressed as far as the samasa is concerned so patanjali says sandeho bhavati sambuddhisyat shashti samaso va iti there is scope of doubt as to whether the word brahmana is the vocative case or whether this is a shashti samasa so there is no explicit expression in the sentence brahmanasya kambalas tishthati there is explicit use of the case which expresses clearly the relation of brahmana with the kambala this is the additional distinction between ekarthi bhav and vipeksha the next distinction is upasarjana visheshanam the qualification of the subordinate or qualification so patanjali says upasarjana visheshanam bhavati vakye in the sentence you can add a qualification an adjective to a subordinate word or a qualification like ruddhasya rajnyah purushah so when rajnyah is subordinate with purushah you can add the word ruddhasya which is linked with rajnyah but you cannot do this in samasa samase na bhavati rajapurusha iti you cannot say ruddhasya rajapurushah this is not allowed in the samasa and finally we have cha yoga so cha yoga bhavati vakye the association of cha is possible in a sentence swa cha yoga ha swami cha yoga cha the association of cha with respect to what is owned and swami cha yoga ha the association of the word cha with respect to the owner here are examples of swa cha yoga so if you say radnyah gauhu cha ashvas cha purushas cha iti so radnyah indicates the owner gauhu ashvah and purushah is what is owned so there is ch added after each one of them gauhu ch ashvas ch and purushas ch so you can add ch after all the swas this you cannot do in a compound samase na bhavati radnyah gavashva purushah so go ashv and purusha when they are compounded this is an example of dvandva samasa so when they are compounded they will not be able to have the association of the word ch in between you cannot say kavashva vascha purushascha and something like that that is not possible similarly there is a case of swami cha yoga if there is one cow which is owned by devadatta yagnyadatta and vishnumitra we can say devadattasya cha yagnyadattasya cha vishnumitrasya cha gauhu so all the three can be added with the word cha but this you cannot do in samasa samase na bhavati devadatta yagnyadatta vishnumitranam gauriti so there is a dvandva compound that is taking place of devadatta yagnyadatta and vishnumitra and there is no scope of the association of the word ch 
in between. These are the distinctions between Ekarthi Bhava and Vyapeksha. We have studied both these together with the primary source quoted from the Vyakarana Mahabhashya of Patanjali, namely the Samarthanika. So to summarize, we can say that Samarthya is of two types, which is interrelated and interdependent. Vyapeksha indicates the interrelation of meanings at the sentence level with independent status of each unit. Ikarthi Bhava is based on these interrelated units as input and generates an output which is one unit where the constituents do not have independent status. The generated output has got something additional than the constituents as far as the meaning is concerned and also the word form is concerned. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.